It's here. The Sony A6400, the good, the bad, and the ugly. This is a good camera, but like everything, there are negatives. So for this review, I'm gonna start with the good things, the things that I like about it, and leave the things that I don't like or even hate about this camera until the end. So, let's start with the good. Let's start with everybody's favorite, picture and video quality. Image quality is amazing in my opinion. These images were taken without a picture profile being selected. There has also been no color grading applied. These are unprocessed JPEGs straight out of the camera. The A6400 can record up to 4K 30 frames per second at 100 megabits per second for as long as your battery or your memory card hold out. Yes, that's right. There is no limit on record duration at all. It also has a 24 megapixel APS-C sensor which captures in 6K and then downgrades to 4K, helping preserve the image quality and crispness. For those of you wanting to squeeze a little more depth of color and image quality out of your footage, you can record in S-Log2 or S-Log3. My personal preference was S-Log2, but I found I didn't really need to tweak it that much, so I really went back to recording without a picture profile, and that was pretty good, I found. I'll be honest, I'm a, a Canon person, but the specs on this are amazing. The, uh, the features that this has is amazing. Now, I actually don't mind the memory card here because this memory card is a lot easier to get out than any Canon memory card that, that I've had to get out. Okay, now we're focusing on the crystal ball, then the football, then the plant in the background. And as you can see, it's smooth without any hunting around. Here we are, a bit of a motion focus on the soft toy, then back to the crystal ball. And again, it's finding its spot without any problems. Here we are with foliage and flowers, focusing on whatever's in front of the lens. As you can see, again, it's got no problems with finding its focal point. And here we are with object tracking. Now this is what we see on the back screen of the camera. And that green box is what the camera is telling us that it's trying to focus on. We actually had the face of this young lady selected and as you can see the camera is telling us it's trying to focus on the net, multiple points, loses it completely. It's really all over the shop. Which um, is rather disappointing until we actually look at the footage that we had taken. Now. The picture on the left is the overlay screen where it's telling us that the camera was trying to focus on the net by the looks of it. But when we look at the actual footage taken, her face is in focus, which tells us that the camera was doing what it was supposed to do, it's just the overlay was either incorrect or lagging, which was giving us a misrepresentation of what was actually happening. This is worth bearing in mind. Just a quick reminder guys, the facial and eye recognition algorithms in this camera are pretty good until you get in crowded situations when there are many people and many faces to choose from. So just remember, one face, good. Many faces, bad. Whew, overheating? No, I haven't had any overheating issues with this at all. When this camera first came out, it was marketed towards vloggers because look, the flip out screen, you can see yourself while you're vlogging, you make all those focus adjustments, and it was the best thing since sliced bread. 
until you fitted your microphone. And then it bumped and banged and worst of all, it blocked the very thing that you were so excited about, the screen. Hmm. Wouldn't that shibble your dickens? In customizing this uh, camera, there are quite a few menus or things that you can do to customize this. You've got the function menu or the FN menu, which you can fully customize. To be honest, when I first got the A6400, I didn't see any value or importance in the FN menu or the My menu customized listings. That was, of course, until I had a closer look at how layered and complex the menu system actually was and how much time it took me to get to functions and settings that I used quite a lot. So the, yes, I reassigned those functions to the FM menu quite quickly, which brings us to the next point. Button, reassignment or relocation. One in particular, the record button. Honestly, who decided to put it in that location? That is so awkward, but luckily Sony has thought ahead and they put an option in there where you can select to have record on shutter press. Well, thank you, Sony. Next, stabilization. And here we are walking around at the back just to give you an idea of what the raw footage would look like. Now, I'm not trying to walk smoothly. This is shoot as it is. The A6400 does not come with IBIS or in-body image stabilization, but the kit lens I'm using does have OSS or optical stabilization. This is shot in 4K at 30 frames per second, and you can see that reported jelloing or wobbling effect. Now this next footage is the same footage, but it has been stabilized post-production. Now you still will see the jelloing effect or the wobbling effect. Coming up, you'll see a bit of a glitch, which is, there it is. And the jelloing effect can be seen in the bottom right-hand corner over the wheel. Now, as easy as it sounds, you could vastly improve the quality of your footage simply by learning to hold the camera steady. If you can't do that, try a gimbal. Now here we are, the rolling shutter effect. You can see the slats aren't remaining in the vertical position as they seem to roll from side to side as the camera pans erratically. Many people don't like this, but honestly, to me, I say, who cares? Sure, if you're a professional, it does make a difference. But to normal YouTubers or vloggers, it doesn't matter. Who cares? Okay, it's time to wrap this up. Here are my final thoughts. Now, is the Sony A6400 a good vlogging camera? Well, that's the question, isn't it? Well, I think vloggers will make it work. Uh, that's the best way I can put it. I think they will make it work because the image quality and the functionality of it are good. Um, but because it's, an, it's a crop sensor, you do have the disadvantage of having to you know, stretch your reach just to get yourself in, in frame as opposed to how you would be on a full frame sensor. What's going on like that? <laughs> that's subpar, you know, that is compared again to, to the Canon, which I came from, that, that's very clumsy. It's sort of like Sony said, well, we're going to have to put this in because this will sell this camera. And at the last minute they realized, well, we haven't worked out how we're going to actually put this screen into adapter from the, the previous one, which was just a 90 degree, if that. Um, so this is what they came up with. I think it was just a, a last minute effort to, um, to achieve something. But the camera itself is good. Um, other than that, yeah, 
I, I totally recommend it. I'd give it four out of five stars, which is pretty good. Or we might get eight out of ten. How, how about that? Eight out of ten.